The gloves came off in an explosive war of words as renowned ITV journalist Rebecca Berry unleashed a years-long well of pent-up fury directly at Prince Harry during the filming of a new documentary on the news of the world phone hacking scandal. In an unrestrained diatribe caught by studio cameras, Barry eviscerated the exiled royal's self-proclaimed victim narratives as entirely undeserving of public sympathy given the relative triviality of his family's tribulations compared to the thousands of everyday citizens whose lives were ruined by the illegal hacking tactics. With all due respect, you insufferable bellend, no one is actually sorry for you or your wife's perpetual pity party whinging over your treatment by 24-hour media cagoles. Barry is seen berating the visibly stunned Duke of Sussex on tape leaked from the caught in the Rye documentary's production. Barry, among Britain's most revered reporting bastions and a tireless campaigner for upholding ethical journalism practices, had already endured a lengthy shoot revisiting her own ordeal being systematically spied upon and harassed by Rupert Murdoch's criminal news corp hacking cabal for years. However, Tensions appeared to instantly combust when Prince Harry attempted to dubiously co-opt specific sympathy for his familial struggles against the unrelenting paparazzi gauntlet and supposed societal racism that he insisted mirrors the illegal privacy violations Barry endured. It's unconscionable Harry would even deign to make that preposterously self-serving equivalency after everything this country's press victims suffered being shamelessly gutted like prized sows, Barry fumed jabbing her pen dismissively at the squirming royal rebel during one especially heated exchange. While news titans hemorrhaged innocent families' most traumatizing secrets and destroyed lives through deceit and corruption, you were safely powdered on your null tavern rampages without a solitary consequence beyond tired media critiques about any miserable rudeness or toxic antics you exhibited. The tirade continued with Barry lashing into Harry over his still-coveted global platform and extreme privilege relative to the vast majority of hacking casualties who received no public voice or recourse. I frankly cannot for one bloody second ponder that delusional nerve you'd equivocate our respective plights, little alone promote some twisted parallel injustices. While we fought to uphold basic civilized values through fact-based reportage, you spinelessly cowered behind palace stone walls issuing drunken pronized hazes of inanities. Barry turned her outrage on Harry's repeated attempts to leverage claims of racial discrimination by the British tabloids as comparable to systematic government agencies hacking a nation's confidential personal communications. You've ever the opportunity to instantly deploy whatever equity and agency your birthright affords to shut it all down, she seethed while jabbing her finger precipitously close to Harry's face. Instead you've chosen a trite, opportunistic vanity project languishing in farcical, self-aggrandized identities like some C-grade American daytime victimologist. Documentary insiders have claimed Barry pounced on repeatedly pushing Harry to discuss Buckingham Palace's own institutional failures investigating illegal hacking and surveillance tactics against private citizens and public figures throughout the early 2000s. But the prince was allegedly extremely reluctant to criticize the firm's lack of accountability beyond his customary grievances surrounding supposed unfair media coverage received by the Sussexes. Harry's ambivalence quickly turned to stunned petulance as Barry repeatedly peppered him about the Crown Estate's cozy cloaked relationships with major newspaper magnates like Murdoch and Daily Mirror ownership, attacking his ignorance and protected status as an epitome of the aristocracy's privilege bubbles. You're utterly clueless and fundamentally estranged from the grievous wounds inflicted by widespread privacy poachings because of your highborn indifference and willful obliviousness to it all, she lectured the stammering duke, who sat noticeably reddening despite camera lights already beaming down. Victims like myself sustained intolerable anguish being invaded and violated through illicit subversions of democracy itself. Not by paparazzi loitering too aggressively as you frivolously proclaimed but by the very institutions you continually skirt accountability for, all while you snidely benefit from their largesse. So just this once, shut that mouth and open those deafened ears. With a withering look of disgust, Barry then punctuated her diatribe in the off-air recordings obtained by British media. No one is actually sorry for you and your rote tale of disillusion, Harry. We're furious with every prominent voice like yours ignoring culpability or feigning convenient ignorance over the real sacrosanct crimes. She takes a breath while clutching the armrest, her steely eyes boring directly into the prince's soul. By all means, regale us with of empty platitudes about overcoming adversity. But don't you dare conflate any sliver of that gilded angst you've marketed with those whose truth your entire existence has persistently denied.
According to eyewitness accounts captured by production staffers, Prince Harry appeared visibly shaken over the course of Barry's verbal assaults, struggling to maintain composure as his famed calm regality collapsed under the News Corp scandal's harsh realities. Eventually producers were forced to call multiple breaks in filming as tensions reached a fever pitch. One could virtually see Harry shrinking into a cowed state with each forceful barrage, described one anonymous set worker of the broadcast confrontation. Barry made it abundantly clear he represented the exact sort of privilege steeped in difference to hauling systemic media malfeasance into accountability that enabled the entire hacking fiasco from being nipped in the bud. While the Duke eventually regained his customary unflappable decorum to continue delivering rehearsed platitudes about restoring trust and ethics in modern journalism throughout the documentary itself, Barry was apparently unmollified by his canned responses. Sources say the newscaster continued hectoring him off-camera with taunts about his royal blind spots and lurid overcompensations as a professional ethnic truth-teller. In a particularly damning incident, the Cod and the Rye producer chose to showcase Barry directly shaming Harry while filming a follow-up reaction interview about the creation's thematic messaging. Even after supposedly gaining a woken consciousness outside the monarchy following Mexjit, it appears Harry remains nearly as mind-bogglingly tone-deaf over the real-life traumas of crime victims and marginalized civilians as the House of Windsor itself, Barry chastised while gazing directly through the camera lens. Their mock outrage over slanderous headlines and PR crises carries no resonance from people having every waking breath invaded through spyware and illegal data mining sweeps run by the cold-blooded syndicates like News International at the probable approval of government higher-ups. The latter's ruinous affronts to actual human liberties and privacies are what requires sincere redemption, not whatever wafer-thin woes Harry's lamented ad nauseum on his and Oprah's soapboxes. When reached for comment after corroborating the leaked footage, a spokesperson for Archwell Media Relations neither confirmed or denied the veracity of Barry's contentious verbal tussle with Prince Harry. The Duke is understandably committed to preserving the integrity of this documentary's message and production while recognizing the raw sensitivities surrounding such a monumental national trauma, read the organization's politely evasive statement. Insiders say the Duke is contemplating outright dissociating from the completed documentary altogether should his role be portrayed too negatively in subsequent edits, potentially worsening public condemnations he's hijacked more sordid causes for self-aggrandizement. Harry stands by contributing his lived perspectives and good-faith aspirations for raising journalistic ethics to inspiring standards, noted an anonymous Sussex rep concerning the standoff. However, no one will be permitted to drag this creation into exploitation territory just for shock value or cynical controversy baiting. Barry, currently in the final stretches of preparing the documentary for global release later this spring, has reportedly refused to cave to any of the prince's demands for redactment or reshoots depicting their expletive-laden feuds. The raw footage and my commentaries shall remain in this production's final cut as immovable evidence of our national discourse's total deterioration, Barry vowed sternly in a Houston television interview addressing the controversy. As a stalwart for transparency and hard truths exposing society's most uncomfortable naked realities, I shan't abide any whitewashed surfaces billowing vanity fair fantasies about who is genuinely worthy of accolades or owed public absolution for past transgressions. If Prince Harry personally objects to shouldering society's solemn historical burden over privacy rights for once, he's utterly welcome to step aside and will air all those truths willfully sans a single royal filter.